Hi everyone, my name is Mariam Basaja. I am a PhD at Leiden University and a technical coordinator, Wodana, Wodan Africa and Asia. And I'm hereby presenting to you uh, the introduction and problem statement to our research work. The Vodana Initiative, which is a unique virus outbreak data network uh, in Asia and Africa, and also part of the Vodan Gofair Implementation Network, basically addresses the current and immediate challenges to use and connect digital health data. Vodana initiative focuses mostly on community ownership over the health data. And the key question in our research is that, can we use the FAIR data guidelines for data stewardship as far as findable, accessible, interpretable, and reusable are concerned in the context of health data, patient data, and research data. And within the Vodana Initiative, uh, we have an international research team whose coordination is basically based from LUMC, Leiden, and also particularly coordinated from Kampala International University, Uganda. Uh, Vodana has uh, partners uh, within uh, 88 facilities in eight different countries, 31 in Ethiopia, eight in Zimbabwe, 20 in Nigeria, 20 in Somalia, five in Uganda, three in Kenya, one in Tanzania and one in Liberia. And there was basically a need to uh, coordinate with the local regulators, authorities and the Ministry of Health within the different countries. And we basically received uh, 18 level, high level letters of support from the African and from our African and international colleagues. So within our research work, uh, there's been a tremendous increase in unconnected digital health data, patient data, research data and published articles which have led or has led to the duplication of uh, data and also basically leading to a uh, lack of accessibility in the long run. And uh, during uh, some of our interviews that we carried out uh, within the different facilities, it was observed that the, most of the facilities actually still use uh, paper records. And um, this has actually led to a uh, lack of uh, data uh, in different situations. For instance, uh, there was uh, missing data in the context of uh, COVID within the African continent. And uh, this basically leads to limited use of digital health data for quality treatment at the point of care in the health facilities. Uh, there's also lack of uh, data ownership uh, within the uh, the, within the architecture that is used uh, within the different facilities. Uh, that is to say that the data produced within the health facilities is not retained. It's basically not kept in residence and it is stored in the cloud. And therefore there is no benefit of the data to increase the quality of care. Um, the other observation as well was that uh, the analytics uh, is done manually and this is mainly because uh, the records are in paper format. This is the end uh, of the problem statement. The next presentations will mainly give details about the rest of the architecture. Thank you.
Every research endeavor starts with a question. From this question, we look for relevant literature or data that exists around this question. More often than not, a question requires us to gather new data. We store the data we gather within our research environment, where we are in control of the entire process. By analyzing these data, we can gain new insights, which allow us to answer questions we have, or to ask even more questions. We look how our results fit in the existing literature, and how these results may be relevant within other ongoing studies. When we meet other domain specialists, we see great benefit from exchanging ideas and knowledge. The first step to answering a question is to know where to look. By ensuring that our research data is findable, we make sure that efforts are not duplicated, and that past research data retains valuable. When we standardize the procedures around data management, not only we can increase the security of our data, but we can also confidently make rules for data access. We need research data to be well described, in a universal format, so we can ask the right questions. With truly interoperable data, we no longer primarily addressing data by label, but by meaning based on a common ontology. Data is the digital fabric of our society. And FAIR makes the fabric sustainable, by enabling the reusability of data, Hello everyone, uh, my name is Oluwali Afalavi and here with me is Ezra Mwesigwa. Yeah, the main purpose of this video is to present to you the architecture and interoperability use case of the Vodan Africa dashboard. The Vodan Africa dashboard has been built on top of the SIDA resource API. This gives us unlimited flexibility and interoperability with systems like DHIS and also the ability to achieve fair data principles like data visiting. Yeah, and uh, finally, before we proceed to the presentation, I'd like to use this opportunity to appreciate our partners, all the members of the Bodan Africa community for the support from the start of this project till this very moment. It's been an awesome experience. We are bold to say we have achieved a lot. Yeah, I want to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to be part of this great and landmark achievement. Thank you very much. The architecture is made up of various components. At the start, we have a one-time data input editor. You can think of this as a custom developed web form or it can be a CEDA open view form. Then we have a container for health facility one and health facility two. Now this could be more than two health facilities. It could be three or four, but for the sake of having this architectural representation we are using two health facilities and there could be components that are missing from either of these health facilities but it was intentional so as to have it not over congested within each health facility we have an instance of SIDA and within that instance we have templates now you can think of templates as forms that dictate which fields are supposed to be captured about a particular disease or a certain use case this is also limitless they could be three or four or more now, data within SIDA is accessed through a JSON API and this is invoked through a cron job. Semantic data is pulled out of SIDA. By semantic, I mean only fields that we are interested in are pulled out of SIDA and stored into a relational database. Then through a stored procedure of fixed queries, we analyze this semantic data and generate statistics out of it and store it into a separate relational database. It is this statistics relational database that is going to be mirrored onto the Vodan aggregate dashboard that is remote. The remote dashboard aggregates data from the different health facilities and makes a copy available to each of them. This means that the different health facilities can share data at the end of the day or statistics which helps us to achieve the notion of data visiting. With this architecture, we demonstrate the practicability of fair data and its associative principles that is data being findable, accessible, interoperable, and data being reusable. And at this point, we believe Vodan Africa has been able to develop an afrocentric system that would ensure data ownership in residents with data analytics available at the point of care and a smart system for data visiting. Thank you very much. Cheers. Modern Africa realizes data visiting in 88 health facilities across eight countries. And the data visiting relates to different sovereign and regulatory systems. 
The data is produced and owned by the health facility and never leave the health facility. However, for the data use purposes, the data will be visited by algorithm. It means the access and permission is about how the algorithm from outside the facility to visit the data in the health facility and doesn't take the original data away and only computes results from the visiting data. The researcher from Fordan Africa have performed an analysis of the compliance of fair data with the regulatory systems in all countries. Moreover, we have agreed in terms of data processing in data use agreement with researcher, health facilities, and Fordan Africa to comply with the regulatory situation in each country, fair guidelines, and general data protection regulation. The local context is important for us. Therefore, we have identified responsibilities such as data processor, data controller, data protection officer, and supervisory authority. Our focus is on building data trust and an organizationally robust system. Therefore, our first focus is on data visiting with limited and static statistics. In the future, we will focus on access and permission for dynamic queries, which would support personalized medicine and research. Hi everyone, my name is Alia and today we are going to talk about capacity building. Um, specifically the overview and some challenges and how to build capacity and trainings we have been uh, given at Podana. So uh, first of all, let's uh, have a look what is capacity building. Capacity building is actually the process of uh, developing uh, and enhancing competencies and skills, abilities, and resources and processes that organizations and different communities need to adapt uh, and strive in a rapidly changing world. In terms of fair, it means um, developing skills which is necessary for fair implementation in different um, domains and places. So for that, uh, it's necessary uh, raising awareness about fear and also educate and train people uh, how uh, the understanding of fear and also how fear can be implemented using tools and um, uh, using tools for fair implementation. So. These are the challenges um, so far we, uh, we have faced it, um, across the world. So it's a lack of understanding what is fair, how does it help um, to the existing ecosystem, and also limited number of um, data stewards is in fair implementation field. So um, these challenges uh, can be uh, can overcome with capacity building, so it means if we launch data competence centers uh, that will help to develop skills and um, abilities which is necessary to develop fair object and uh, fair implementation tools and also educate more data students who can promote and implement fair in different fields and uh, domains that will address um, these challenges uh, of uh, fair capacity building. And this is so far um, the trainings that we have um, done uh, at Odana. So the first is um, 32 data stewards um, trained on creating machine readable data and also uh, ontologies. Uh, using um, Stanford's uh, CDAR workbench tool, where we learned how to create um, uh, different templates um, based on the data and uh, processes we have, and also how can we create um, semantic vocabularies. And then um, the second one is 
uh, within the scope of MAFIC uh, program. Uh, we have developed a very good stewardship course, which also helps to uh, raise awareness of fear, but also uh, implement um, and do the verification process to the existing data life cycles. And I believe that this kind of trainings and um, courses will uh, enhance uh, awareness of fear, but also um, it will help to uh, implement fear in, across different continents and domains and fields. So um, as a further work in here, we, uh, we believe that um, creating a uh, Vodama Data Competency Center will address the issue of, um, we've uh, discussed it in the previous slides, and uh, will help to uh, grow fair uh, in more places. Thanks a lot for your attention, and see you.